I'm sitting inside Aptera, the world's first solar powered EV that is literally driven by the sun, which is the company's sales pitch. This company was able to do something super cool that nobody else has ever been able to do before, and that's to create a vehicle, a solar powered and electric vehicle with way more range because of how efficient it is. You know, the traditional EV industry, traditional automotive uh, SUVs and uh, sedans are not very aerodynamic. They may look sleek, they may look sports car-ish, but they're not aerodynamic. So we started there. How do you make something aerodynamic? And then how do you make it lightweight, super efficient powertrain, and then added solar, which kind of ties a nice bow on it. You never have to plug it in, leave it outside. You get 40 miles a day of free charging from the sun. In Southern California, that's about 11,000 miles a year of free driving. So the average driver just never has to plug it in. Their other innovations include solar panels that have literally been conformed to various areas and panels of the vehicle. You can see them on the hood. You can see them on the back. Very cool, very efficient. And the way that it works is you can either plug the vehicle into your universal electric charging station, or, and this is the cool part, you can actually collect energy from the sun, which is also stored in the same battery. The implications of something like this are incredibly rad, and you gotta wonder why something like this hasn't been done before. This is another time when I ask you for those comparisons. Talk about the competitor's range compared to yours. If you look at the average EV out there, uh, they're burning around 300 watt hours per mile. Uh, we burn about 100 watt hours per mile. So we're using a third of the energy per mile. So on a third of the pack, we can go the same distance as a uh, Tesla or other small uh, EV. Um, and that means we can have an affordable vehicle. Uh, this vehicle with a 400 mile range is about $40,000 when the average new car in America is uh, encroaching $50,000 and the average EV is encroaching $60,000. Other cool facts, this thing is actually classified as a motorcycle. So in the state of California, you could actually drive in the HOV lane. Another perk, definitely. Jason Hill, uh, who's had an amazing career in automotive design, he's the one that gave us, you know, the general industrial design aesthetic of this, um, how to take this mathematical shape and make it beautiful, make it useful, you know, where do the cut lines go, how does the door open, how do people sit in it and experience a vehicle, and it's got to be approachable and feel comfortable and, you know, do everything you want it to do. So, I'm just a touch under six feet tall, not a super big guy, not a super small guy. I'm pretty comfortable. They were worried about me getting into this thing. They were talking about, first you gotta swivel in. I didn't listen at all, got in no problem at all. The interior is made to be spacious and useful. We've uh, taken a lot of cues off of modern EV design. Uh, you know, the dash is simple. Uh, most of the functions are on the screen. So there's only really two function buttons uh, for the doors to actuate the doors and a hazard button. So three buttons for the whole interior, everything else is on the screen. The vibe inside the vehicle is super sporty. It's a two seater, there's some trunk space in the back and they like to say that you can go to Costco, pack it up with groceries and take it with you. We've actually got a vast amount of trunk space and it's really just an artifact of the super aerodynamic design. You can put a couple mountain bikes back here, you can push the seats forward and you actually have um, over seven feet from the back of the seats to the rear here. So we also have a system that you can, you can lock out the rear hatch so you can have a little more room if you need to store bigger things or bring them home from the store. The other thing that I think is super interesting is we were told because the aerodynamics of this thing are so similar to a motorcycle, just like with certain motorcycle helmets, you won't get any bugs on the windshield of this thing. Well, this vehicle has an amazing uh, set of safety features, airbags in the front, uh, auto ratcheting, uh, seat belts, uh, obviously all of the crash impact protection. Uh, but often people look at this and they say, oh, it's got three wheels. I don't think of a three wheeler as really stable. Uh, but front wheel drive race cars, anytime you see them take an aggressive corner, they actually lift the inside rear wheel on aggressive cornering. So for this vehicle, it's three wheels. We push the weight forward. It's very, very stable. We've had it out on the skid pad, you know, dynamic testing uh, performs really, really well. We've tried very hard to flip this thing and it's, it's not gonna happen. I'm super excited because they told us we can go drive this thing. Let's go. Right, so getting inside right now Ugh. with my dude Chris. You're in, man. We did it. We sure did. 
sure did. So you were telling me that this is actually a track vehicle. So yeah. what, what do you mean by that? What kind of tracks are you taking this thing to? Uh, there's a track time booked. I don't know if we're allowed to say what OEM track it is, but it's like, you know, like a proving grounds basically. So we're going to be doing, you know, range and efficiency testing with this vehicle. The anticipation is pretty high here. I'm not sure what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Man, that has some pickup right there. Yeah, yeah. And this this one's actually power limited, so that's part of what we're, you know, testing and calibrating at the track is is our, you know, motor tuning as well. So, so it will be faster. <laughs> what's the zero to sixty in this? It'll be less than six seconds, but we'll know for sure very soon. <laughs> so what's really cool, you see we're solar charging. So even though it's, you know, near sunset now, we still get 95 watts from the solar. Wow. So real time, it's giving you the stats on how the vehicle is charging right now. Right. Yeah. So that's, you know, this is part of our, our testing is we have all the, you know, sensors reporting all the faults and everything. I feel like that's the coolest one. This is a state of charge. Um, for the battery so this has the full you know production pack in it so 44 kilowatt hour battery pack and then specific to a track vehicle what are the other features in here that that wouldn't be in the the vehicle i was sitting in earlier like <laughs> what's what's the yellow and the red and yeah the... yeah there's like a emergency um you know close off the contactors in case anything happened and then this is a kind of a slow cool down so you'd get 70 seconds to leave the vehicle if this, this cuts basically the accelerator pedal just in case and i, I love the like <laughs> the, the, the dell yeah. uh, device in the middle there yeah we're, we're logging all data on this while we're driving so we're collecting a lot of solar data and data on you know the, the drivetrain right now so wow this is the left and right side mirror and the reverse so we, we have full visibility around the vehicle which is great you're not sacrificing the power or the speed for the solar yeah. charging or the uh, electric uh you know powering of the vehicle this thing really gets up and goes when you put your foot on the gas it does this motors and other vehicles that are heavier but because of our lightweight body we can we can go even faster so it's it's almost counterintuitive if you design for efficiency you happen to make something fast the state of charge was like 71 percent when we got into this thing we just drove around the block yep. two times probably i don't know two or three miles dropped one percent or something like that i mean like has the solar charge had any effect in that amount of time there's no way it could have right basically if we leave it st uh, parked for a half hour we should have more than made up for the test rides we've done like the previous test rides so we've always been gaining range aptera aptera look it up solar ev <laughs> so know? this is your breakout year for this vehicle this is the breakout year absolutely yeah we're going to be able to drive these all over the place and visit reservation holders all over the u.s and and uh hopefully enter production by the end of the year so this is a crazy year for us how many reservation holders do you have almost fifty thousand. wow yeah. i have no idea that's amazing a lot man it's a lot of people want theirs really bad you know because it's there's nothing else like it well, thank you Welcome so much back. for taking me on the ride. I really appreciate it, of dude. Of course. So yesterday at the CES Trend Spotter presentation, they talked about the evolution of energy efficiency and some of the things that they've tracked over the years. We started at wood burning, then we moved to coal, then we moved to natural gas. The next evolution was the EV revolution. And after that, there was solar. And you could really see how exciting something like this would be in that paradigm, just imagine the possibilities. And the future looks bright when it's driven by sunshine. And, yeah, so we're, and we're back to 70% again. That's crazy. Even in, look, we're still getting 11 watts, we're in complete shade. I mean, that's kind of wild.